Be a culture champion. Culture trumps strategy. Culture is a catalyst that informs how business gets done. How decisions are made, how business gets done. And, I, and I'll give you an example of a company that really understood this. They've understood this and it's, they would say their culture has enabled them to innovate and dominate their category for decades. It's one of the best company cultures I've ever seen or studied. It's a client of mine and, and the client is the Mayo Clinic. Now if you think about the Mayo Clinic, Today, they're the number one recognized brand in the world for healthcare excellence. Additionally, for 20 consecutive years, they've been one of Fortune 100's best places to work. Now, the seven words you see on the screen, the needs of the patient come first, that's their purpose statement. It's why they exist in the world. And it informs how people show up and the choices they make, serving the needs of the patient. Well, I had the opportunity to spend a little time inside Mayo Clinic, about 18 months on a consulting project. We interviewed dozens of patients, and we interviewed 400 employees. And these employees were categorized as either top performers or high potentials. And what our, part of our mission was is to understand what was it that was putting these employees in a position to be so consistently extraordinary, because we wanted to replicate it. And we did the interviews in rooms like this. They were one-on-one -on -one conversations where we had focus groups with three or four people. And I noticed something very unusual happening right away. What I noticed was in the first 60 seconds of every conversation with every male employee we encountered, you would hear those seven words, the needs of the patient come first. We got to the end of the second day, I got skeptical. I called my team together, I said, what do you think? This is place is magical. People are so compassionate, they care about the patients, they care about each other, they're so emotionally engaged, so committed, so kind. I said, it's all true, I have the goosebumps too. I said, what do you think about the needs of the patients thing? Everybody says that in the first few seconds, it's a little weird. And I said, you know, we brought our video cameras and our team in, I said, it's, <laughs> we're gonna have this, this great purpose video, but our research is gonna be bullshit if they were coached. And our, my team said, yeah, we, we need to push back on that. And so I said, okay, tomorrow morning we are. And I'll never forget this, my first interview was with a guy, his name was Irv, he walked in that room, sat across me, very casually, I said, Irv, tell me about your job. And so I, well, I love my job at Mayo. I'm a manager in our security and operations group, been here, been here nine years. And he said, now I'll tell you, every day in security and ops, we get to come in and put the needs of the patients first. Yeah. I said, time out, Irv. No, you don't. No way. Not buying it, big guy. Sorry. Nine years, you've never been anywhere near a patient. So I'm not buying this whole needs of the patients first thing. Well, he, he leaned across that table. He was a real big dude. So I leaned back. And he said, let me tell you something, Mr. Consultant. I said, Irv, you, uh, you have the floor. <laughs> and what he said to me was, the people that come to Mayo Clinic aren't where they want to be in their lives. And we've assembled a team of the best care providers to help those people get back to where they want to be. And it's my job and the job of my team to make sure they have a safe and secure environment to do their job. So don't you stand there for a second and tell me we don't put the needs of our patients first in security and operations at Mayo Clinic. I said, go on with your bad self, big boy. That's it, like that's the thing. And I will tell you, that emotional commitment to something larger than oneself wasn't isolated to the conversation with Irv. It was evident in over 400 conversations we had. And you know what they call that at Mayo Clinic? You know what they call that? They've come to call that a life-changing career. This is the Mayo Clinic EVP. And what it means is when you come and work for Mayo Clinic, you can have an opportunity to work for a company that's purpose-driven and has a positive impact on people's lives. And in return for your commitment, we promise back to you that your life will change in a positive way on our journey together. That is a big, noble promise. And from my perspective, why shouldn't work be that way? Why can't we, as small business owners and entrepreneurs, fulfill that promise? I believe we can. You know, that was something that uh, we wanted to explore uh, in a little more detail in this project, this whole idea of leadership changing lives, and we've been unpacking ever since. Um, I'll, I'll ask you, just to show of hands, how many, of, how many of you have worked for someone 
or at some point in your life been maybe coached, counseled, or mentored by someone that truly helped you become the person you are in this room today? How many of you have received that gift in your lifetime? If your boss is in the room, raise your hand, please. Let's be smart about this. Yeah, uh, unanimous. Everyone's received that gift. You know the impact extraordinary leadership can have. We wanted to unpack this in a little more detail at Mayo Clinic, and I asked my client, Champion, I said, we've talked to a lot of tenured people, people like Irv, nine years, 15 years, 20 years. I want to talk to some new employees, people that have been here between six and 12 months. Right? They have recent benchmarking experience somewhere else, but enough traction here to see if their lives are truly changing. She said, it's a great idea. So we get this sample. My first interview is a guy named Jeremy, works in their marketing department, like Irv, doesn't have a lot of patient contact. And I asked him, Jeremy, you've been here seven, eight months. He said, this right. I said, you work on marketing? He said, I do. I said, so in the short time you've been here, has your life changed? I, I would never be able to do his answer, his eloquence justice. So I brought a short excerpt of my conversation with Jeremy. And here is Jeremy from Mayo Clinic on how extraordinary leaders change people's lives. This is gonna be crazy, but I feel like I'm a better dad now since I've started here better husband, just a better person overall. When you're appreciated for what you do and the talents that you have, it, it makes you see things differently. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> I think I got so used to over the years just punching a clock. And you go, you do your job, you give everything. You get a paycheck, but it uses you, you know, and it's been different here because it, ref it refuels me. It doesn't just use me, and that means, I mean, I can go home now, and I'm not just like completely wiped out. My wife, my kids, they would all say that it's totally different. It's just, I'm back to what I was probably years ago. And I think that's the thing that I can't say enough to people is that you don't know until you're in the situation. And it's like, wow, this is what a career is. Not a job, this is a career. Who would you guess is the higher performing, more productive employee? Jeremy, his previous employer for a decade, or the guy you just heard from? Ah, obvious, right? But maybe, maybe that's not the right question. In fact, maybe there's a better set of questions it would be worth us considering as small business owners, like, who's the happier, more fulfilled human being? Who's the better husband? Who's the better father? Who's the better member of his or her community? See, that, that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity we have. It's the gift. Leadership isn't a job. It's a responsibility. And it's not about us. It's about humility, sacrifice, service, love, and helping other people become the best they are capable of being.